hello everyone uh, welcome to licd lecture 32b today we are going to discuss linear amp generator and application of triple five timer ic in a monostable mode so let us start our discussion okay so let me adjust this amplitude first okay yeah so triple five timer in a monostable mode as seen earlier produces a capacitor voltage which is going like this okay so whenever initially the capacitor voltage is zero and it charges uh, exponentially towards two third vcc and whenever it reaches two third vcc the internal uh, block uh, you know will activate and uh, the upper comparator will will do its action and uh, accordingly the output will go low so that's what the operation of your uh, you know ripple pi timer in a monostable uh, you know mode does but if we want this capacitor voltage which is increasing exponentially to increase it linearly with respect to time then that's what we call it as a linear ram generator so what is the goal over here the goal is to make this capacitor voltage which was increasing exponentially to to make it increase linearly okay for some applications we require this ram voltage so this circuit uh, this application where we can uh, you know make this capacitor voltage to increase linearly with respect to time is called as linear ram generator now how it is done let us see so uh, what we do is over here same circuit only instead of r1 register we make a constant current source okay now let me explain you to you what is this okay so this was the earlier diagram and let me slightly decrease it amplitude now you can actually compare it straight forward so this is my modified circuit uh, triple five timer as a linear amp generator on the right hand side and on the left hand side i have a normal uh, monostable multi vibrator using triple five timer ic as you can see clearly the difference is uh, instead of r1 we have connected a constant current source so this np pnp transistor along with re along with ra and rb forms a constant current source now you must be wondering what's a constant current source constant current source is the one which provides a constant current its current will not change its value as per the voltage or as per the time okay so we feed this constant uh, constant current to the capacitor and uh, and uh, and we will get the required linear increase in the capacitor voltage now let's see that in detail uh, before going into you know detail over here we know that a bjt operates npn or pnp operates have three operating regions your active region your saturation region and your cutoff region so basically in the active region the current is almost constant so that is the region we are operating this bjt on so over here the npnp bjt is biased in such a manner that the current across it current across it is almost a constant so i if you see carefully i is nothing but your collector current over here this is my emitter this is my base and this is my collector so this is my vb actually this is uh, ra and rb as my are my biasing resistors okay so that's the only difference so here i have connected the same thing in a functional block diagram over here actually functional block diagram it's fine but uh, more or less we will understand from here uh, more more accurately okay so this is my functional block diagram of the same thing okay so let us start with the operation yeah so the concept over here is uh, in order to produce a linear ramp like waveform a resistor r1 of the monostable circuit is replaced by a constant current source which is formed by pnp transistor resistor re resistor ra and resistor rb okay and how does it work okay so the idea here is that if the capacitor c1 is charged linearly by a constant current source then the capacitor voltage vc1 increases linearly like a ramp voltage now this is the jargon the, the the text jargon now let's do it in the mathematical form so let we know all know that the voltage across the capacitor vc1 is given by uh, vc1 because this is the capacitor c1 so vc1 means the capacitor voltage across c1 so vc1 is given by we know all know that uh, uh, your uh, vc1 is 1 upon c1 into integral of 0 to the i dt i hope that this point is clear everyone no no one has a doubt in this capacitor voltage in terms of current any doubt we know na i is equal to c dv by dt so we have just integrated that anyone having any doubt 
or shall I proceed? Hello. One of you can confidently. Uh, no doubt, sir. Okay. So over here, the capacitor voltage VC one. If I consider I to be a constant current supplied by the you know constant current source, if I I is a constant, then what is the integration of a constant? Anyone? Integration of a constant is a linear ramp. See, derivative of a constant is zero, but integration of a positive constant is a negative going ramp. Uh, if it is uh, here, there is no negative sign. So integration of a positive constant is an increasing ramp, and incre integration of a negative constant is a decreasing ramp. Okay, I hope that you all know this about the uh, about uh, this uh, you know the integral. So if we integrate a constant value, you will get a linearly increasing ramp. Okay, so V C one will be. I have to somehow make this current I constant. Okay, so that is my job. So this entire discussion is on that. Uh, if I somehow make this current I constant, I will get waveforms which are looking like this, which will which will look like this. Entire working will remain absolutely the same, absolutely the same as the monostable multivibrator. I don't have to repeat that. You all can refer that. Uh, In a previous video about the monostable multivibrator, and you all can do that. Entire working remains the same. The capacitor voltage is initially zero. Then it can go to maximum two third VCC, and uh, then then after the output voltage will go low, and again it will wait for the next trigger pulse. Again the capacitor voltage will increasing. This is the same thing. The only difference is here the capacitor voltage is increasing linearly instead of exponentially. So that's what we call it as a linear ramp generator. Okay, uh, let me just uh, okay fine. Okay, this is fine I guess. Let me reduce it. Yeah. So our major aim is to somehow make this current I constant. Now let us concentrate on that. How we achieve that? So from this figure one point five, can we write VB in terms of RA, RB, and VCC? Yes, as you can see. We can clearly do that uh, because it's just a voltage divider. So V V will be R B upon R A plus R B into V C C just by a simple voltage division rule. This is a point number A. Now, what is V B given by V B minus V E, right? And also, what is V E given by I E R E? We know that for a fact. Okay. And what can we can we write V V E as V B minus V B? Yes. And we are assuming over here. The collector current is approximately equal to the emitter current, which is same as your current I. Okay, and what will be V now? V is I E R E, which is I into R E, small I into R E. We can rewrite it over here, which is equal to V B upon V B minus V B E. Okay, so current I will be given by voltage divided by resistance, which is V B minus V B E upon R E. And from A, what we can write? So uh, from A we can write uh, VB. We can substitute from uh, equation number A. So we can write current I is given by RB up, RB upon RA plus RB into VCC minus VB. This is the numerator and the denominator is RE. Okay. So in this equation number B, uh, any doubt so far? By the way, this is a PNP transistor. Okay. So the voltage across it, I mean at, at the base will be VEB. Okay, so the voltage V V B is negative. We if we write it V B, okay, V E B is the positive, because this is a PNP transistor. So we are simple for simplicity. We are writing V B. Not 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 a problem in that. Okay, so in this equation, can we say that all the terms are almost constant? Yes, because we have all the resistors R A R B and R E, which are normally constant. Supply voltage we do not don't want to change. Well, V B is a function of temperature, so it might change. But the value of VB is very very small compared to my, uh, you know, VB. Okay, what is VB? VB is V RB upon R A plus R B into VCC, which is a fraction of your uh, VCC voltage. So VB can be let's say three volts or something. Okay, so three volts is much much greater than 0.7, right? So we assume that the value of uh, of VB is much greater than VB. Hence, we consider that I is equal to R B upon R A plus R B into V C C upon R E. Now, in this equation number C, all the terms are constant. We have resistors and we have supply voltage. Hence, we can say that the current I flowing through the capacitor is constant. 
now uh, any doubt so far any doubts anyone okay can we move on to the next part okay fine so uh, this current this current i is sped to the capacitor c1 over here then the capacitor voltage charges linearly and produces a ramp voltage across it as you can see over here this signal is a linearly increasing ramp okay and as soon as the capacitor voltage charges to 2/3 vcc that means what will happen the output will go low and the capacitor will discharge instantaneously as soon as it as soon as its voltage reaches 2/3 vcc okay so the capacitor voltage uh, vc1 remains zero over here until you get a new trigger pulse so that's how normal multi mono stable multi vibrator works in triple pi timer and the cycle will repeat as you can see over here once the capacitor voltage goes to zero again the capacitor voltage will charge with the new trigger pulse initiation and again the output will remain high as long as the capacitor voltage is charging once it reaches 2/3 vcc again it will instantly discharge and the output will go low okay so that's how the normal operation works uh, anyone any doubt in this now we are deriving quickly the expression for the time period anyone any queries so far whatever we have discussed hello anyone okay fine no problem so that means uh, uh, you might have understood this so let's derive the expression of for t so now the voltage across the capacitor c1 is given by let me just expand it a little yeah i think this will work yeah so the voltage across the capacitor vc1 is given by vc1 of t is equal to 1 upon c1 integral of 0 to d i dt now i we know it that it's vb minus vb upon re so we substitute it over here t uh, we take it uh, outside the integral because i is a constant and it is given by this formula which is also a constant so it will be vc1 of t will be vb minus vb upon re into 1 upon c1 actually i have forgot to write here c1 it is actually c1 into t which is our roman small 2 equation number 2 so but at time t equal to capital t now let me show you this is t right at time t equal to capital t what's my capacitor voltage my capacitor voltage is 2/3 vcc as you can see over here clearly it's 2/3 vcc okay so at time t equal to t the capacitor voltage vc1 of t becomes 2/3 vcc and this equation number 2 becomes 2/3 vcc is equal to vb minus vb upon re into 1 1 uh, upon uh, c1 into t capital t and uh, over here the vb is rb upon re plus rb into vcc we substitute all the things over here and we rearrange it and we get the final expression of t over here which is 2/3 of numerator is vcc minus uh, vcc into re uh, into ra plus rb into c1 and the denominator is rb into vcc minus R, ra plus rb into vb so this is the time period of the linear ramp generator whatever you see over here i hope that this point is clear and this is the derivation for the time period of a linear ramp generator now let's quickly look into the lt spy simulation of the same so i think this was the pulse width modulation let me open up the linear ramp generator okay here we have it over here linear ramp generator let me simulate this quickly so this is my trigger pulse this is my capacitor voltage as you can already see it's linear let me divide this into two planes so this is my trigger this is my capacitor voltage and this is my output okay as you can see it's clearly a linear uh, linearly a linear ramp increase like a linear ramp so and and its value is reaching to 2/3 vcc as you can see over here so if i take this point over here at the height it is around 3.319 okay so it's close to 2/3 vcc and this are my trigger pulses so i show you the trigger pulses yes see it's a very short duration pulse going from pi to 0 it's a negative going trigger pulse so this is the same concept which we have seen just now as you can see over here uh, if i divide it into one more plane plot then it may look like perfect okay uh, i think i will shift this over here and uh, 
yeah so this is my trigger input this is my output okay and these are my linear ramp uh, capacitor voltage which is a linearly increasing ramp signal so that's the output of a linear ramp generator and that's the circuit so the, we have used a bc 557b transistor and all the components uh, the values have been defined predefined okay uh, so any queries in this output how we have achieved this and we have derived the expression also a capital t expression also any doubts anyone for this topic no sir okay if there are no doubts okay fine very good so if there are no doubts we have come to the second uh, application uh, uh, for today go to lcd lecture number 32c okay so let me just stop the recording for the Okay, okay, very good.